गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू द पर्सनल कमेटी मीटिंग गुड मॉर्निंग कैन आई आस्क एवरी वन इफ यू कैन पुट योर फोन ऑन साइलेंस प्लीज एंड ऑल्सो हैप्पी बैसाखी टू एवरी वन इफ यू नो एनी थिंग अबाउट बैसाखी इट्स लाइक ए क्रिसमस फॉर अ सिखिज्म for six is more like today is our uh, christmas so we will be celebrating tonight yeah. thank you very much any apology we have apologies for lismore councillor car councillor pandey councillor peg and councillor skelton thank you thanks adam late item to be introduced by chair non any declaration no thank you minutes of the last meeting pay one of pay to any matter rising pay 3 mon okay so can somebody move to minus yeah thank you the second I wasn't here either, so that's why I can't see. <laughs> Thank you. Item number five, apprenticeship project update. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you.
Thanks, Danny. Any question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, I'll ask that question again then. Do we get many mature apprentices? No, not new start apprentices. We, we, what we tend to do, we find that our new start apprentices are younger. And again, we haven't got any data, but the, paying the um, apprenticeship salary would lend itself to that if, if you are a more mature student, you couldn't, you know, that salary wouldn't be high, high enough for you to, to live on. Um, workforce development, we have got a lot of mature students because they're existing staff and uh, they access the uh, levy to, to develop within their careers. So yes, existing staff, yes. New starts, not really. Okay, thank you, Chair. Council Dean, sir? Yeah, just, just on the report on 4.2, I mean, you, that's where you made the most important points. Yes. Um, on 4.2 and 2 about apprenticeship recruitment salary. Clearly, we are not competing because our salary isn't to the level it should be. So, Chair, I recommend that we commend to the Council that we uh, make the apprentice salary as suggested in this officer report to the level which will actually make us more competitive for people to apply for apprenticeships in the City Council as opposed to other, other organisations. Um, and I think the second one I will say we, we should recommend uh, on the workforce development, um, the, the fact that for mature students or even uh, younger ones, departments are disinclined because 20% of the time is taken out doing other the apprenticeship assessments and so on and so forth, and could that be compensated through, through some uh, funding payment from the levy? Unfortunately, the no. levy is only for the training, uh, yeah. that you can't uh, well, do that. I think we should be lobbying film. government to change that, because mm. that, that, that's counterproductive. So I, I think one recommendation I think, Chair, we should consider putting forward, because that would make us more competitive and more attract more applicants for apprenticeships in the Council. Do I agree with you, Councillor Dean, sir? Thank you, Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Article number six, tenders management, quarter three, 2021. Angela Seal. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Thank you. Can I just draw out for personnel committee and the chair, Councillor Sandu, the key points from the report, as you are aware, we bring a standard report to the committee on attendance, and this is in relation to quarter three and the council's performance for the year 2021-22. I'd like to draw your attention to recommendations 2.1 and 2.2. So our performance for quarter three, we saw 3.67 days lost, for each FTE against a target of 2.12 days. So we are over target and not exceeding our attendance target. This shows a slight increase on the previous quarter two in terms of the FTE days lost. We have in previous reports shown the absence rate. If we took out the COVID related absence, this would come down and the figure would be 3.04 FTE days lost which is slightly over our target of 2.12 days FTE. To put this into context for you, on Monday the 4th of January 22, the Cabinet Office warned UK public sector employers to prepare for worst case scenario staff absence rates of 10 to 25 per cent of COVID-related absence. Our COVID-related absence was 13.82 we also reported to the last committee that as we headed into quarter three, that the FTE days lost would increase due to other respiratory virus cases over the winter period. At paragraph 2.3, we are suggesting that we bring a report to a future committee to report on some of the positive approach of our occupational health and wellbeing offer. 
This has been talked about before at our committee, and we will bring a report on our EAP service, which is our external offer of support, which is 24-7, and the positive steps we are taking to support and address colleagues' health and well-being moving forward. 4.1, you will see the top three reasons for absence in quarter three. Whilst remain the same, COVID-19 has moved from position three to position two reflecting the increase in cases reported by public health across the city of Derby. You will see that stress and anxiety has positively decreased compared to the previous quarter due to the absence rate increase in the COVID-related absence of 2.49%, which, as already stated, was an expected position for the Council heading into the winter months. We have presented information to the corporate leadership meeting and reported that we had seen prior to this financial year a positive downward trend which had taken place year on year. This is encouraging and shows the positive impact in recent years with supporting managers to manage attendance as well as the increased occupational health and wellbeing offer. So although we have seen a slight increase now in this current financial year, we are seeing the direct and indirect impact of the pandemic, and this has to be coupled with the societal factors as a result of the pandemic. We are working with colleagues in Heather Greenan's performance team to look at targets we might set going forward for the next few years, and we'll continue to look at the service action plans that heads of service own and have been progressing with the head of service business partners in HR who provide coaching and advice and training on how to confidently manage attendance. We will also be working on something called a turn on the curve report which I'm sure you will have come across in other committees. This will set out what we have been doing to improve performance, and although we have seen a slight increase in absence that is still within the context of the national and global pandemic, whilst we are moving out of this, this in the context of a positive reduction in our absence rates previously, we will bring back to a future committee the positive work that we've been doing with our occupational health and wellbeing team. We have also been updating our absence codes and have some slightly more defined and clearer absence co reasons for, um, for taking forward as part of our data intelligence. At 4.2, you'll see that their occupational health and wellbeing, we are continuing the statutory work and the face-to-face -face health surveillance, which the HSE had asked organisations to suspend. We are picking that back up and working at pace through that to enable colleagues to drive and our driver assessments for council vehicles so that we can progress as an organisation. We have also launched a very successful menopause French session to support colleagues across the organisation with the impact of menopause and also the impact on mental health. I hope that that gives you a summary of the report and where we are in terms of performance, but also bringing back something to the future personnel committee about our occupational health and wellbeing approach and the work in help, helping to turn the curve to bring down the council trend, as we have seen a slight increase in this last winter months. We, we feel that we can bring the rates down further and we have done in previous years and would look to your support and agreement to bring a future report to the personnel committee. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Any question? Yes, one. I'd just like um, some clarification, please. The 3.67 days lost for each full-time equivalent colleague, um, does this include people on long-term sick? It does. Or people who are on sick and intending to leave the council? That would include both of those categories. Should we look at then looking at a more defined sickness for those who have casual sick periods instead of those on long-term sick and also on sickness intending to leave the council? Just a thought. Yeah, I mean, we do monitor each of those categories. We uh, monitor separately short-term frequent absence and we also monitor long-term absence ongoing within the council. So we do have as well people that will have a capability hearing and will be leaving the authority at that stage and we do monitor the number of capability hearings we have. So that is actively monitored within service areas by heads of service at this moment in time. Chair. So, Lisa. Yeah. 
Chair, the, the report recommendations are to note the um, things. I think we should note it and uh, wait for the next uh, positive work that you're going to show us. Yeah, thank so, you. So take up the recommendation and note the report. Thank you, Councillor Dean, sir. Everybody agreed? Yeah, it's noted. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming down and presenting the reports. And once again, happy Vesakhi. Thank you. Hopefully see you next year after election. I'm contesting election like Councillor Holmes as well. So hopefully we'll see you next year.